What's up guys? I'm Danica. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday and it is officially my moving day. This apartment that you guys have seen in a few of my videos, I usually just like literally just sit here and talk to the camera. I have been living in this apartment for exactly one year. I've been in Hong Kong for I guess exactly a year and a half today. Wow. When I first moved to Hong Kong, I moved directly into a service department on the Kowloon side. I wanted to make sure that I set myself up for success, and so I really treated myself for the first few months to a really like a, like a big apartment in a great building where everything was taken care of and where I wouldn't have to figure everything out from scratch by myself. After a few months in that apartment, I wanted to move closer to the center of town because it was easier to get around and it was easier to get to work. My office is all the way on the south side of Hong Kong Island and when, where I lived when I first moved to Hong Kong was on the Kowloon side. So not only did I have to cross Victoria Harbor every day to get to work, I also had to get from the north side of Hong Kong Island to the south side. So it was a little bit complicated. Plus, then I started going to the gym really early in the mornings, and that just became a whole thing because the subway here doesn't start running till 6 a.m. Anyway, so in September of 2019, I moved to Wan Chai, which is the neighborhood we are sitting in right now. And I wasn't ready to like buy a bunch of furniture or like a vacuum cleaner or sign a two-year lease. Most apartment leases here in Hong Kong are for two years, although you can technically legally break the lease after 14 months. So what I decided to do was to move into another service department. Now service departments are pretty rare, I think, in other big cities. I had never even heard of service departments until I moved to Hong Kong and I moved here from New York City where there are a lot of people coming and going all the time. But I guess in Hong Kong, because it has such a long history of people coming here for work and you know staying for a few years and a lot of people don't want to buy a bunch of furniture and set up a whole household, service departments are usually furnished apartments where everything is sort of taken care of for you. So I don't need to worry about setting up like a water bill, a gas bill, an electricity bill, a Wi-Fi bill, or you know, stuff like that. I don't need to worry about signing up for cable TV because it's just built in. So it's sort of like a hotel, except and it depends on what type of service apartment you live in. For example, the Four Seasons, which is obviously like super fancy. They run the Four Seasons residences here in Hong Kong, and you could theoretically live in a service apartment inside the Four Seasons, which honestly I was tempted to do, but is so expensive. The service department that I moved into after I was living in Kowloon is this service department, and this is called the Luna. And it is right in the middle-ish of Wan Chai, so it's closer to the Admiral side of Wan Chai then to the Causeway Bay side. So the Luna is on a street called Lun Fat Street and it is right behind Ship Street and Ship Street has some amazing restaurants on it. And so I wanted to live somewhere that was central but also where I could walk places. Lots of my friends live in a neighborhood called Mid Levels which is beautiful and you can get like giant apartments and the views can be really beautiful but you can't like walk out of your door and get a coffee. Like you have to get a bus or a mini bus or a taxi or like the building bus, or you need to just somehow figure out how to exit your compound and get to a commercial street. I moved here from New York and I think growing up in New York, it's just part of my ethos that I love to live somewhere that's ultra convenient. Like to me, the most convenient city in the world is New York. There are amazing cities all over the world, but maybe it's because I know New York with the back of my hand or because New York runs 24 seven. Like you can literally walk out your door in New York, basically wherever you are. And there'll, there will probably be like a drugstore open, a pizza place open, a Chinese restaurant, a Korean restaurant. Your options are limitless and the subway runs 24 hours. Anyway, this is not a video about New York. So this apartment that I've been living in for the past year, the building is called The Luna and it is run by a development company called Vanke, V-A-N-K-E. And when I moved in here, I decided to live here because of its convenience, because of its location, because the building was relatively new. When I moved in last year, this building had only opened as, a res as like a residential building, like maybe like a, a year and a half before. So it was like pretty new. Um, that was really important for me because I, 
I really wanted to live in, in a new building. And the Luna is also a service department, which was really great for me because I didn't wasn't ready to commit to buying furniture and stuff like that. So it came fully furnished. All the bills were already set up. You just pay, pay like one flat fee. There are people who work at the door all the time, so it feels like super safe. Um, I was relatively new still to Hong Kong when I moved in here, so I wanted to be somewhere where there was like an element of someone sort of like watching out for you and like taking care of stuff. Um, so I could order things online and have them delivered here and I would know that there would always be somebody here to, you know, sign for the package or whatever. And there was always somebody who knew like, you know, whether I was coming or going and there was always someone manning the door. That was really important for me as somebody who was new to the city. So when I moved in, I wanted to move into a one bedroom apartment. I didn't really want to live in a studio because I've lived in a large studio in New York forever. I, I owned my apartment in New York and I did want like something that felt like, <laughs> like I don't know, it, to me in my mind, like a one bedroom is a little bit more grown up, and even though I, it doesn't matter. It's not like it's the same because it's like the same footprint amount of space. Um, so I decided to, to pick a one bedroom corner unit here in Wan Chai in the Luna. I think I wanted a corner unit because the corner unit one bedrooms here had so much more light than the non-corner unit ones because if you don't live in a corner unit you just have walls you like just have windows along like one wall but the corner unit you have basically like 180 degree windows i felt this was important because my last apartment i was so lucky my apartment in kowloon had full victoria harbor views and that was so that was so great for me and I, I loved it so much to be able to come home and look directly at the water and I just felt so calm and it just felt like a really serene space for me especially in a city that's as bustling and as fast-paced as Hong Kong so moving to the middle of the center of town where I'm not looking at water I wanted to at least have really good light and you'll see when I show you the tour of the apartment that even though I basically just look at other buildings in my, like you don't see anything, you can barely even see sky when you're sitting in this apartment, but at least the apartment is bathed in natural light. Anyway, I've been yammering on for like five minutes now. Without further ado, here's the tour of the apartment that I am moving out of my empty apartment tour. Welcome to my apartment. So when you first come into the apartment, you walk right into the living room. When you walk in to the right, there is a little ledge and there is, I guess, like art. Um, I've put like my checkout forms and stuff there and my key cards just so I can hand them in later. But also down below here, which is really great, is that there is perfect shoe storage. And it looks like it's just perfectly designed for shoes. I would literally keep all my shoes here. There's, This is the best shoe storage I've seen in any service department in Hong Kong. It allows for like dozens of pairs of shoes and I definitely took advantage of that. One of the things I did buy to supplement the closet space, which you'll see later, is I bought this rail here. Um, this is just from Ikea. I think it was like 20 bucks US and I would put my coats on here and like bulkier items that wouldn't fit in the closet. Over here, hi. Over here is a long full length mirror that is right on your way out. So you can always check if you like accidentally have something stuck in your teeth or you make sure that you have pants on before you leave, stuff like that. And here is the main room. This is the living room. And the living room is the same room as the kitchen and the dining room. So all apartments in Hong Kong are pretty small. Um, this is actually on like the decent biggerish side for a one bedroom. So you'll see that that is the door that we came in from there. This is the rail. And then over here is the entertainment console, which is basically a built in television. And there is a bunch of storage below that I always used to use for like shoes and bags and just like extra stuff. Um, there is a tiny desk here that my ukulele is on right now. 
I tried to work at this desk once or twice, but really it was too small. Like I need more space for stuff than just my laptop, but it was great because it had a built-in like tiny storage thing here. There was a drawer and I have to move my Le Creuset, but <laughs> under here, this is really smart. This is a great place where you could plug a bunch of stuff in. So there are actually outlets there, which I don't really know if you can see. This is one of my biggest issues with this apartment. All my issues with this apartment were very, very small, but the inside of everything was painted black. So it was like so hard to find stuff. You'd have to get like really close. This is, oh, I actually stored this in here. This is a handy phone that they, that they let you use while you stay here. It, I don't really know what it does, but I think you can actually take it around outside and it connects to 3G or something. It's great for people who are traveling and don't necessarily want to buy a SIM card for whatever they are. This stool here was meant to go with the desk, but I don't know if you can tell from this angle, I'm going to squat down, but it is a three-legged stool, which means it is not stable when you sit on it. So I just stuck it here and I would put like magazines and stuff on there if I needed to. The dining room and the kitchen area. So this looks like a sarin end table, but it is definitely not a sarin end table. In China, you can get a lot of designer copy pieces. So I suspect this is a copy piece either from Ikea or from mainland China that was shipped over. It is a pretty solid piece of furniture and it looks really good. But what I will point out is that when you sit on it, that curvy piece down here, this like white curvy piece, it looks cool, but it leaves you with basically nowhere to put your feet, which I found to be an issue because I use this date table all the time as a desk and a workspace, especially when we were working from home in all those weeks of lockdown. These chairs are really cute too. I would say they're not like really comfortable as work chairs, but they're great dining chairs. They're really solid. I bought myself a McDonald's bubble tea, low sugar. I customized it as a treat for moving out. Over here is, there is a steam oven. Most Hong Kong kitchens do not come with standard Western ovens, but they do come with steam ovens that do a variety of things, which I believe it also like, cook, like bakes things in a conventional Western way, but I couldn't figure out how to use it ever. Um, but it is pretty spacious. What I did end up doing was just like, storing things in there, which is what you also do in New York with ovens. <laughs> Hong Kong is like England in a way where a lot of apartments don't have full-size refrigerators, but they do have smaller mini fridges. Um, this is not like those tiny mini, mini fridges you find in hotels, but it is definitely probably a third or a half of the size of a standard small American apartment fridge. The sink is built into the counter, which is really nice. I thought this was like a really nice touch. It is very, very small though. So, and you see how there's like not a lot of counter space. I actually did a lot of cooking in this apartment just because when I moved in here, I was like deep in the throes of my wellness journey. So I was cooking a lot for myself. It has two induction hobs here. I don't know if you can see because it's quite dark, but there's a small one here and a large one back there. The apartment comes with a kettle and it comes with a spice rack and a place to hang your utensils. It comes with some cooking utensils and it does come with a variety of, you, of like other dining utensils. I bought some chopsticks that I'll leave here. It came with fork, spoons, and knives. It came with a like a can opener and like an oven mitt and stuff like that. It came with scissors, which was great. Up here, there is some more storage and some cooking implements. I'm leaving some stuff here that I'm not gonna use going forward. Maybe the next resident can use it. Um, the pots did come with the apartment. These are like storage items. This is like a Kleenex cover, so the tray. This is like a desk thing. I'm just gonna leave it in here for inventory. Up here, I really don't know what that stuff is, so I stored that the entire time I lived here. There are some sieves that I'm leaving and some measuring cups up there. And then this is used for just dishes and cup storage. It comes with a set of two of most things, which is, um, and you know, I didn't really use these cups because I love giant cups. And so I always have like my own giant mugs because I love giant beverages. <laughs> One of the coolest things about this apartment and a lot of other apartments in Hong Kong is that they have, even though we are not piped into like 
like a extractor, massive extractor situation. They somehow do manage to set up an extractor fan in every Hong Kong apartment that I've been to. So there is an overhead light, which is so useful when you're cooking, especially because your back is facing the window and there's an extractor fan. And it's three different levels and there's the light you turn off and on. I probably spent the most amount of my time in this apartment in the living area. I actually pushed the dining room table over to the window over there because I really liked working with the natural light in front of me. I didn't really like working in the dark and also there were no like floor lamps here. The only light in these apartments is the inset ceiling lighting, which to be honest, I am not a huge fan of recessed ceiling lighting because what it does is it, it casts a shadow. So if you're sitting there and you're leaning over like a book or something, you're casting a shadow and you can't really see anything. This becomes a problem when you have mirrors and stuff and there's like a light I'll show you guys later it like was so frustrating to me the sofa is great I really just use it to like put stuff on it comes with a coffee table and a remote for a smart tv that is the air conditioner remote for both rooms and one of the best things about this apartment is that there are two mini balconies which to be honest you don't really spend a lot of time on because they are so small but I can show you you could open them and get some fresh air so this is outside my balcony. This is what it looks like outside of my apartment. And you'll notice that you just see other buildings and other balconies. So it's not like the best view, but still like it's nice to have like a tiny bit of private outdoor space. So now we're gonna go into bedroom and the bedroom is actually a really generous size for a bedroom in a one bedroom in Hong Kong. This could have been a studio if they had just gotten rid of this sliding door, but the sliding door is a nice touch. I just slid the door shut. Oh, it's kind of hard to open. What is good about the sliding door is that at night, for example, when, oh, I didn't show you, there is a washer and dryer over here. there's a washer and dryer single unit. So after you wash, you can also dry. What's so interesting, and I have not really experienced this anywhere else, is that the washer only takes 30 minutes, but the drying time takes about three hours. So sometimes I'll wash my clothes and then set them to dry. And then because it's quite loud, I would just close this and then I would just like sleep with the door closed, which you wouldn't, you know, would then muffle the sound. The bedroom also comes with a little like makeup table or I don't really know what this was for. They call it a vanity. It wasn't super useful to me because there was no light here. If the only light you would get would be natural light, but it's coming from like one side and the only light that is Close to it is a recessed ceiling light behind your head, which is basically not very useful for doing your makeup. I did use this to like store a bunch of stuff and it does come with a cushy stool, which I also use to like put a bunch of stuff on. The bed, I believe, is about a queen size bed. They use a different sort of measurement in Hong Kong. It's sort of like a British double bed. And there are these side tables on either side. Now, these side tables are, are great in theory. Um, there's also great storage here. So there's storage and these drawers are pretty, pretty deep. It's also great that there are charging ports here. Again, you can't see it because like the inside is painted black, but at least the outlets are cream colored. But if you notice, it's kind of hard to get to them because they've designed these bedside lamps to basically you can't really use the bedside tables because say you put like a couple of books here, then like you're immediately hitting this. And it was a really big challenge to use these bedside tables. And sometimes you would like whack your hand against it in the middle of the night. Small complaint, but I believe it's valid. Out here, there was so much natural light in the bedroom, which is kind of hard because even though it's great to have natural light, because you're facing other people's apartments, you don't really want to leave your curtains open because people can just see inside your apartment. Although it was nice to like come home early some days and have an apartment that's like bathed in light because it is a corner unit. There's another balcony here. 
which I can show you. It's on the same side of the building as the living room balcony, but it also steps out and it basically looks at the same stuff. This was kind of useful to me because when the protests were going on last year, I could see all the way to Hennessy Road over there and I could see if there was any like tear gas or if there was any police activity or any protest activity over there so I would know whether or not I could go out. You can also see down to the street over here on Hennessy Road, which is which was one of the big protest roads. And then you can also see all the way over here to Queens Road East, which was also another big protest road. And so this was actually a pretty useful thing to have during protests last year. One of the things that's really interesting about this space is how they managed to divide up quite a small space into so many different sections, which is like a plus or a minus, depending on how you feel about sectioned off apartments. Here, let me turn this light on. So. After you walk through the bedroom, there's another door here, which I don't know like why you would ever use this door, but there is a door here that swings open. I never close this door. And this is sort of like a little dressing area, but this is where all the closets are. So you see that this is one side of the closet. This is for hanging like longer things. There's some storage at the top. These, a lot of these are my hangers. I'm just gonna leave them here because I can't take them with me. And this is a sliding door. And on the other side of the closet is a section for hanging shorter items, the safe, and then there are three drawers here. These, this was probably like, these, these sliding closets were very useful to me because I hung a lot of stuff, obviously, like I have so many hangers. And on this side, there is, there was a storage like set of shelves that you slide the door open and there's just like a bunch of shelves top to bottom. Now, when I saw the apartment, I was super excited about these shelves. When I moved in, these drove me crazy because you see the inside of the shelves are painted black. And 70% of my clothes are black, so I could never see anything once I put it in here. Every time I wanted to find something, I would have to like take all of my clothes out and like throw them on the floor so I could find something. I made a mental note to myself to never ever paint the inside of any wardrobe or any storage unit black because it makes it really difficult to find stuff. Over here, see, okay, now, <laughs> this is one of my biggest issues with recessed light in the ceiling. So in this space, the only light you have is, I, you can't even see it, but this light overhead. And this light is right in front of this giant mirror, which ostensibly is like the mirror that you use when you get dressed in the morning because this is the dressing area of the apartment. But because it's right overhead, you can't really see anything because it's just it just casts shadows all the way down. It's not as bad in the camera, but when you're trying to see, like all I see is shadows, especially when you're wearing black, which I, I do a lot. Maybe I should just wear more color. So what I would do all the time is I would actually turn this light off and I would just sort of like guess what I looked like based on the backlight, which is like not ideal. See, you, like, you can't like really see my face very well, even now. Anyway, I love, theoretically I love this layout, but I think there are some problematic design elements. However, when we turn around, let me just close this sliding door here. When we turn around, the bathroom is a very good size in this apartment. So this is the bathroom and it's surrounded by mirrors, which is so, so great. I love that there are so many mirrors in this bathroom because it makes the bathroom seem so big and like so bright. And I love that the walls are white. It just feels so clean. It was easy to clean. I mean, I had a housekeeper come in a few times a week, but, and that's part of the service of this building is having a housekeeper come in, but it was just, it just felt correct for a bathroom. There was also plenty of storage. So there are these really deep drawers here, again, black inside. So a little bit hard to find things. Two drawers. I left all the free toothbrushes in there. And all of these vanities, they open up. Lots and lots of storage in the bathroom. I'm pretty sure that the bathroom had like the most storage of any room in this apartment. They give you an iron and an ironing board. The shower is massive and there is a rain shower and there is a handheld shower. And what's really great about this bathroom is that there's a window. So, I mean, this is again, a window shade you'd never want to open, 
but theoretically it's good that it's there and it does open so you can air out the bathroom. These vanities also open up for storage. So there's a hairdryer, lots of storage, both sides, lots of storage. The sink, <laughs> I had some real issues with the sink. So the sink is beautiful and it's a Duravit sink. So it's very high quality. It's cut, custom cut into the countertop. But I don't know why they did this, but they put the faucet just on one side of the sink and you see how close it is to the edge. So it sort of forced you to like only work on this side of the sink. What was also really, really hard is that, I don't know if you can tell the depth from the video, but the cabinet actually comes out about a quarter of the way over the sink. So when you're washing your face, you basically have to like open the cabinet up and then stick your head against this in order to avoid just getting water everywhere. But otherwise, this is a beautiful design. It's a beautiful bathroom. I really, really enjoyed using this bathroom every morning. It really woke me up because there's so much beautiful natural light. So that's it. That's my apartment tour. I am moving out of this apartment today. I've obviously moved like almost all of my stuff out already. It's already in my new place. And yeah, this is it. This is goodbye to this apartment. I feel I've never moved as much in my life, I guess, as I have in Hong Kong over the past year and a half. And to be honest, it feels kind of weird. Like in New York, I've lived in the same place for over a decade because I bought it over a decade ago and I love that sense of home and stability and like not having to take your stuff like and put it in bags and like take it to another location all the time. I do think I do get like a little sad about this sort of stuff or not sad, sad is not the right word, but I do have a feeling of closure every time I leave a place and yesterday when I was moving my bags out, I did have a moment and I thought about how much I've changed over the past year and how important this particular space and my sense of place in this in these four walls has really has really like helped me grow so much in the past year. This is the apartment where I really I've learned a lot about myself, not just in terms of going on like a physical wellness journey and really kickstarting good habits in my life for probably the first time consistently over a long period of time, but also where I've had to do a lot of, this apartment's where I've had to do a lot of thinking and introspective, you know, just introspection about myself and, and the state of like how I fit into this world. One of the things that we talked a lot about in college and Dartmouth is all about community and sense of place is wherever you go in the world, finding your sense of place can be one of the hardest things. And for me, being in Hong Kong, being a complete fish out of, the, out of water, being a foreigner, but somebody who can blend in and also not being able to speak or understand Cantonese, which is the local dialect is, has been really, really interesting and I wouldn't say it's been hard, but it's been interesting. And then compounded with the year and a half that we've had here in Hong Kong, when I first moved here in April of last year, the first two months was like so easy. I was like, wow, Hong Kong is so easy to live in. The infrastructure is amazing. It's so modern, but yet so steeped in tradition. And there's such a strong sense of community. And then everything changed two months after that, when the local protests started. And after the protests had been going on for about six to eight months, then immediately coronavirus happened. And 
That was January here, right after Chinese New Year. It almost feels like it's just been a blink of an eye. And now October is just around the corner. October is literally like in four days. I can't believe this year has gone by so quickly. And because the year has played out the way it has, I've actually spent so much time in this apartment. This apartment wasn't a great fit for me, not in terms of my feeling ever completely at home, um, not in terms of like, it, I just never, nothing ever became second nature to me in this apartment. You know, when you live somewhere and you start to like know how to like, I don't know, where everything just seems like second nature. Like you don't have to think too much about where you put something or how something operates. You can always find everything. It just feels like it's like an extension of yourself. This apartment is great, but it's never felt that way for me. I think for, for someone else, it could be the perfect apartment, but yeah. I've never thought about apartments that way in terms of UX, but I guess it's important. And that's also something I've realized living here. But it was a really important year for me living in this place and it's important for me and I, I don't know why it's important for me but I feel like it's been important for me to acknowledge that and how when a space it doesn't really challenge you it didn't challenge me in like a difficult way but it I did feel this is a place where I, I, I felt like I grew up a little bit and I feel like I learned a lot about myself and because of the circumstances of the year I was I spent a lot of time in this in this space and it's interesting to leave but anyway on to new things thank you so much for watching this video i hope it wasn't too tedious or boring or too like introspective and i wouldn't yammer too much about irrelevant things but I, I really like watching apartment tours, especially empty apartment tours where people talk about the space and like how they lived in it and reflections on how their time was in that space. I, there are even like books written about this that I, I'm kind of obsessed with. There are all these books about writers and, and how their office spaces or their home spaces you know, became so important in their work or the, or the way that they, or their creative process. Anyway, like and subscribe if you please, and I will see you next time.